G'day guys, welcome back again. I put up a picture of a paw yesterday called Bejeweled. I'll show it to you. Still wet, because I only did it last night. Uh, it's just dry on the edges here, but the rest of it's still very wet. It'll take about five days to dry. Uh, now this one, um, I personally didn't really like it, but I thought I'll put it up anyway. And everyone, well, everyone seemed to really like it, which I was really shocked about because me personally, I don't like the, the cells and the muddiness and everyone said it looked like um, sea glass. And I'm thinking, what's sea glass? So I Googled it and I thought, oh yeah, now I see what they're talking about. Um, but anyway, so this one was inspired by my lovely friend, Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. Hi Karen, uh, she's been experimenting with some different techniques lately and one of them was the sandwich pour where you put a lot of white in the bottom of the cup, little drizzle of colours in the middle, a lot more white on top and then pour out, tilt and then torch afterwards. So you're getting little cells where you want them, you're not torching beforehand and then tilting so you're stretching all your cells out so it's kind of like a reverse um, pour. So this one is a sandwich pour but it's a lot thinner mix. Normally when I'm doing my flip cups I do a one to one ratio of pouring medium to paint. This one I thought because I'm torching afterwards I still want big cells so let's make the paint thinner. So I used two parts pouring medium to one part paint and then poured, tilted, didn't really have any cells course because I hadn't torched and then I torched afterwards and then my cells came up so I know from my experience with swiping when you swipe uh, you don't tilt well I don't you torch afterwards so if you've got a really thick mix you swipe you torch you get small cells if you've got a thin mix you swipe you torch and you get bigger cells so this was my theory here on using a thinner mix and having bigger cells so it's kind of worked in the way that I've got big cells but then it hasn't worked because I just think it looks a bit muddy and my cell color is a bit muddy so I'm gonna go again and I'm gonna go with my usual one-to-one -one ratio we'll put this guy out of the way so I can keep drying just over on my drying shelves here uh, so I'm going to go one to one ratio as I always do with my flip cups. So 60% glue, 30% water and 10% Floetrol in my bottle there. Um, so I'm going to do three cups. This is a 40 centimeter by 50 centimeter canvas which is uh, 16 by 20 inches. So my two white cups I have got um, what have I got 150 grams of pouring medium and 150 grams of paint in that one 150 grams of pouring medium 150 grams of paint in that one so 300 300 600 grams of white paint and then the rest of my colors will just be sandwiched in between so these guys I've just done 20 grams of pouring medium and 20 grams of paint. Let me show you the consistency. I'll climb up here onto my little ladder. Uh, try not to fall off. Uh, where can I get it that I can show it to you without getting in the shadows? I'm still in shadows. Fingers are in the way. Can you see the mound? Little mound that it leaves. So that's the consistency that I like to pour with. Leaves a ribbon on top and a little mound. Okay, so that's it. Um, so as I said, 20 grams of pouring medium, 20 grams of paint. Normally, that's only 40 grams. Normally I would only use 
uh, one drop in that but because I've still got lots of paint I've got all this white and I want the cells to be able to come up through I'm going to put two drops in each color of my treadmill silicone so two drops in each color and I will make sure I stir it really well because um, once I flip the cups over I don't want big blobs of silicone to come to the surface because then I'm going to be stretching those and you know what happens with a big blob of silicone that you stretch? It turns into a horrible worm. So, make sure you stir it really, really well. So I've gone for like beachy Caribbean sort of colours. Caribbean sunset. I've got a little bit of this, this is what I, I call shrimp made this myself it's a very light sort of a terracotta sort of a color I guess you'd call it terracotta shrimp is what it's called and my navy actually I should tell you that these have all got 20 20 20 grams of pore medium and 20 grams of paint these two here which I really like together and I put them together um, 30 grams of pouring medium, 30 grams of paint. So a little bit of extra of those too. Okay, let's do it. Um, so, obviously a lot of white paint. Let's just put, so I need to use a third of this in my first layer. And then I've got another third for my second layer. And I'm doing them in two separate cups because when I did a, one of these previously when I was just practicing, um, I only had one big cup of white and I used so much of it in the first layer that I didn't have enough left for my second layer. So that's why I'm just doing two cups. We don't need such big cups actually. Oh well. Smaller cups would have sufficed. Initially, I was only going to do two. That's why I got these big ones out. I was only going to do two cups. And then I thought, nah, I'll drag them a bit because I want those sort of stripy lines. Oh, that's thickened up a bit. Navy's do thicken up a bit. Let's put a splash of water in that one. Primary colours, the blues, the reds, the yellows. Even the dark green, they're so thick. Now, a little drizzle. This 40 grams of paint in here has to go across all three cups. So it needs to spread across all of them. So I only made up enough. I worked it all out, I calculated it, and I'm a bit pedantic like that isn't it. I didn't want to make too much paint and then be tempted to use it all because I only want a little bit of paint. So someone's tooting their horn outside. What is going on? So I've gone the dark blue and now the light. I can put a little bit more of that because as I said I made a bit more of that. This is my favourite two colours next to each other, my navy and my peacock, it's called. I'll show you the colours in a minute after I flip the cups over. So I had a really good pouring weekend. Today's Monday. I don't tend to work Mondays. Mondays tend to be a little bit quiet in the day ward where I'm working in the hospital. So I had a long weekend. Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. Saturday I had a pouring workshop, which was great fun. And everyone did a variation of a ring pour. Some did wandering pours. Some did jiggle pours. Some just did the, the one big ring in the middle. And then we all moved on to a, a bigger canvas and we did five flip cups, which was exciting. Some ladies had never poured before, so it's a big... Big step, I guess, going from never pouring to a five flip cup pour, but I, I give them little cards to take home. I'll 
show you my little cards. Everyone gets a little card like this, you know, with everything written on. What the pouring medium is, what the ratios are, how much paint you need for the size canvas you're using. Um, I'm going to change that border with the dark next to that. Will I? Yes, why not? Uh, yeah, so that, so I've got that at home to refer to when they get home. Because there's a lot of information to take in when you're in a pouring workshop. It's nice to give everyone a little card to take home. It saves everyone making notes. Although I do supply pens and papers if people want to make notes. And then yesterday, Sunday... Um, I spent pretty much all day in, in the studio. I'm on my own at the moment. Hubby's away. Kids are all gone. Well, except for Gemma who comes and goes as she pleases. But um, pretty much all gone. Uh, now, do I want these two together? I don't think I do. I don't think I want the two blues next to each other. So yeah, I had all day to myself just to paint. And that's when I did my... Oh yes, I did my um, balloon dips. That was exciting. Should have seen my first few. Oh my goodness. I had no idea what thickness to make the background. I just thought, oh yeah, it, it can be nice and thin, like when I do my, you know, my little cups where you put a big thick background on your little cup and you sort of drag it around. I thought, eh, it'll be like that, but no, it wasn't. Big mistake. Don't use thin background. So anyway, I had a play with that. I had a um, few tests on my card and worked out the thicknesses that I needed. And then did that pink balloon dip. Pinks and purples. Gorgeous. And then it was so much fun. And I thought, I'm going to go again. I'm going to do some blue ones. Really enjoyed that. So I'm going to do a big canvas with balloon dips. Because look, there's no... You know, you can't really go wrong. With these flip cups, you can go so wrong if you over tilt or your paint is too thick or your paint is too thin. Like, it's hard. So, balloon dips, nice and easy. And you can do a big surface. You don't have to worry about tilting them. Do a nice big surface and get a good result, which is always a good thing, isn't it? We want a good result. We've spent a lot of money on our canvas and our paint and our pouring medium. See if I can, I'll just drizzle a layer in first to cover it and then I can pour some more white in on top. So I don't want all the white to sink down to the bottom. I'll just cover it first. So this is the sandwich. This is the two layers of white bread with the filling in the middle, isn't it? Got our sandwich. Ham and cheese. Maybe a salad sandwich. And it's the white bread because it's white paint. Wonder what it would look like with um, black paint sandwiching. Might have to try that. And then go for really bright colours. Hot pink. Bright green, bright yellow. What do you reckon? Good chance of mud. Very good chance of mud. Alrighty, let's flip these over. Um, I should tell you the other thing. I've got my push pins underneath. Now, with this canvas, there's no support across the middle. So, I've got a folded up puppy pedal pad underneath. My canvas is going to sit on that. I can just feel it under there. It's not too, not too thick. It's just going to take the weight of the paint in the middle and stop it from sagging. So that's the idea for that one. Best not to use something that's got hard edges, like a book, because you may see your, your corners through there. So just something light, maybe a folded up tea towel or a hand towel, something like that. It's just light, soft, I should say. All right, 
Let's let those sit there for a minute. I'll tell you about my colours. So for the beachy, this kind of, the, the reason for these colours in my head is, as I said, like a, a Caribbean sunset, the beach. You start with your dry sand, which is pale, which is this one. That's the shrimp. And then as the uh, water starts licking that sand there, it goes a little bit darker. So that's the raw sienna. And then the waves are coming across over that wet sand and it's just very pale, kind of a pale bluey green colour. That's the peacock. And then as you get deeper and deeper out into the ocean, you've got your southern seas, your cool blue, and then your deep space in the really deep sea. So that's what I'm imagining in my head. Whether or not that can come to fruition, I don't know. But that's what I've got in my head. So I'm going to pull this down and hopefully get some stripes. Dark blue, light blue, some beachy colours. And that will give me that idea of what I'm trying to achieve. Hopefully. Right, cross fingers. Paint's released already. I've sprayed them with oil. Let's do this. So I'm going to drag them all the way down. And then I don't want to waste any of it, so we're going back up again. And a lot of the white is going to be in the, the bottom. And there's the stripes. Should I do this so that you can see it this way, hey? You can never see what I'm doing when I'm showing you the back of the cup. That's about it for now. I'll, one of my other cups I'll, I'll finish that corner with. Alright, so these are looking good so far. Oh, I'm so tempted to torch them. I've got cells already. Don't torch. I might even forget and torch. No, I won't. Alright, let's do this one. Ooh, gorgeous. Whoops, can't reach next to the cup. There we go. Now this one I'm going to have to go backwards. Not so important to cover your corners because, you know, we're not, we're not tilting after we've got cells. So we don't have to save the cells. Um, if that makes sense. Come on, peach. Where's the peach? Oh, look at those stripes. Oh, gorgeous. I'm so tempted to torch. Karen. I'm going to have to do another one of these with the sandwich, like this, like your sandwich, but I'm going to have to torch before I tilt. There's just a big blob of, big blob of white paint there that I haven't mixed in properly. Look at that. So wouldn't that be nice, Karen, if you look at this now and you're thinking, look at those stripes, look at those cells popping up. I'm going to do another one exactly like this, these colours, and I'm going to torch it first. Got lots of bubbles, but I'm not going to torch. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm going to wait. Let's do this. Right, cover the whole surface. And I don't have to worry about overstretching anybody, which is great. Just have to cover my corners. I do want to try and keep my my lines. And depending on how much paint you um, tip off, will also determine how big your cells are going to be. So if you really stretch this out, what's on here, and you push it all off the sides and only leave a little bit on, you've got less paint on here, your cells are going to be um, smaller. 
Whereas if you leave a lot of paint on the surface, your cells, in theory, should be bigger. I'm going to bring the paint back to the centre. It's about here, so I want it to go that way. It's all about centering my paints. To go over the edge, just over. I don't know about that. That wriggle. Let's see if I can get some of that that wriggle off the top there. No. No, I think I'll just leave it for now. I can just go straight down later on if I want to. Let's turn around. Make sure that this pedal pad's in the middle still. Okay. So, that looks like what I had in my head. Um, I do want to get this strap off the side because I like more of a muted strap than a definite strap like that so while the paint's here you can see where the weight of the paint is it's right there while I've got it here I'll take it to the side and just push it over a little bit I don't mind the kind of wavy looks you get that don't you when the the sea washes in at different areas and you get those kind of wavy areas on the on the sand I haven't got much of my peachy color in there even though I did add more now I don't like this zigzag so that's going to have to go and I've almost got the sides covered there's a little bit there that's not covered but oh, let's see if I can get it that way see I'm moving the weight of the paint to where I want it to go to there. And over and back again and straight over. Okay, I don't mind that little bit of a wriggle there. That's okay. I can deal with that. I can straighten up the rest of it. Right, I think I'm happy with that, with the composition. Mm. I would have liked that bit of corner to go, but just because it's more of a definite strap, no, I'm not going to take all the weight of it back over there. It's missing a little bit of paint on the side, so I'll just pop a bit of white there. If I can disguise it a little bit more with some white, it won't look so dramatic on that corner. Just wanted a little bit more muted. I'm not going to worry too much about my sides now. Um, I'll do them later. Let's get to torching. I'm excited. I really like those beautiful stripes. Um, I just wish more of my sandy colour would have come through. But but it may come through when I torch. I may get little apricot cells popping through. And there's a lot of bubbles in there, so um, the torch will help with that too. All right, now, decisions. Do I go just over the whole thing and have a mass of cells come up? Or do I do what Karen did and just have like stripes following the stripes here? Oh, answer me, guys. Wish you could answer me. Um, have a think about that while I put some paint on the corner here. I don't know. When I did the my bejeweled, I torched everywhere, the whole thing. Um, and I was really happy with that, how the cells just, you know, popped up everywhere. So, maybe... I should do that but then I also really like just having the lines oh look I'm gonna do this again obviously I'll do a few of these so maybe I can do one today where I do one type of torching and then then tomorrow I'll do one with another type of torching and then I can see which I prefer um, I 
think I'm just going to torch just everywhere, just lightly, just everywhere, and see what happens. So I'm just going to go up and down, up and down, up and down, and then just wait. Wait, 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 and see what happens. It's got a lot of action here. I probably got closer here, didn't I? If it was closer to me, I probably got closer. All right, let's go again. Up, down, up, down. I won't do that corner again. All right, let's wait. So as you can see, small cells popping up uh, because my mix is thick. So I wasn't expecting to get big cells popping up. Uh, when I did the bejeweled, as I said, that was a two to one mix, two parts pouring medium to one part paint. This one is one to one, so I am expecting much smaller cells. I want to go again with one in the middle, like one and a half times pouring medium to one part paint because I think the cells will be sort of halfway between two. So it's thicker than what I was expecting. I'm not getting much through. I'm gonna have to go a little bit more and get that heat to really go through. I think what I'll do is pick up the cells in these, in the color and then you know leave the white which is obviously more dense so there's not going to be that many cells coming through there anyway um, and just pick up the cells that way in the colour so I'm not really getting much in the way of the peachy coloured cells coming through which I would have liked more of those which is a shame so if you want to, you know, stretch these out a little bit, you could tilt a bit um, and stretch them out. If you were so inclined. Um, for the purpose of this though, I'm not going to. Let's see if I can get some more cells through here. Come on cells usually pop up so easily. Now where are you when I want you? Nowhere to be seen when I want you to come up. They are coming, that's just slow. There's a lot of paint. Well, there's some peach cells coming through here. What I could possibly do is make my white slightly thinner than the colours, just so that um, the colour, the cells which have got the, well, the colours that have got the oil in can come through the white. But I like the dramatic white, white stripes. It's kind of like the froth, isn't it, on the on the waves, that foamy froth. grow for a little while. Um, they won't grow too much because the paint's quite thick so there's nowhere for the paint to go. It's not going to spread out because it's so thick it's going to stay. Um, if it was melted ice cream, if you can imagine it as an ice cream blob, it stays like that. Um, and if you pop a little bit of sauce, strawberry sauce on top, it just stays like that. But once your ice cream starts to melt and spread, that little blob of sauce is going to spread as well. So it's kind of like the cells. They're going to, if the mixture or the paint here is going to spread, your cells will get bigger. But it's not going to because it's quite thick. So if it was an ice cream blob, it's just staying in the freezer. It ain't melting. So it's staying where it is. How's that for an analogy for you? Can't get any more through here. Wish I could. So 
So this is what I really, really wanted. This um, beachy colour going into that pale water. And then you've got the froth there of the waves licking against it. Um, haven't got that much of it. Probably need to add more next time. Okay, last little torch and I'll take you in for a close-up. I don't think I'm going to get anything else through at the moment. I think that's probably it. Um, I'll wait maybe an hour before I take a photo, um, just so that you can see if anything changes. I haven't done my sides yet. Oh, I'll do them after. I'll show you guys. I'll take you in for a close-up. Kind of looks like an aerial shot of the of the sea, doesn't it? Actually, I'm going to take the camera down because you're not going to be able to see those little cute cells from way up there. You just can't. Let's go down and have a look at them. There she is. Okay, let's start down here. Go away light. Can't get rid of that light, it's above me. There we go, get rid of it there. So really pretty cells. Multicolored cells. Not a lot of colors in them. Um, the colours that I've chosen are pretty much all opaques. I think the only semi-transparent was the cool blue. So that's it there, the cool blue. So it's got a few little other colours inside. But most of the colours were opaque, so I'm not going to get a big variety of cell colors inside each other. This pale turquoise here against the white is beautiful, isn't it? How gorgeous is that? And then over here in the corner we've got some there's some of the peachy colors popping up there and the navy blue coming through. So um, yeah, it's pretty much what I had in my mind of a beach and the waves coming in across the dry sand. So uh, yeah, I'll have another go at this. I want to have two goes now. I want to do another one like this, same colours and tilt as usual. And then I want to do another one with a slightly thinner mix. Um, and I must remember to put more of the peach in with them. Okay, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.